What is going on you sexy mobiles? Today is finally the day that I get to do one of my biggest dreams come true in the car world. And I know this is super lame, but to me it means a lot. I'm finally gonna get to paint my Carrera GT in that ruby stone red that I always wanted it to be painted. I wanted to try the wrap at first because I wanted to see if I was really gonna fall in love with the color and I was gonna be able to deal with the pinky whatever bullshit. And I, I honestly, I am in love with it. I think doing that wouldn't be anything less than the biggest tribute I can to the Carrera GT and to Porsche and that color itself because I adore it and I think it's so special. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the car to Galpin because the guys at Galpin have a division called Galpin Autosports which is, goes gas and those guys fucking destroy everything and if you knew anything about gas and what they've done and what they do and how big of a part of the community and the car world they've been in of the history of the car world you'd understand I go with them but I'm not going to bore you with more of that shit. I need to move the cars right now we just finished our podcast i need to go get bargini and tony and get it going oh and probably the career gt which hopefully will start bargini you guys hey. Mind, hey. mind helping me out with everything yeah let's move some cars you, hey we're back we're back to the good old days when we used to move cars for 30 minutes <laughs> movie, movie car montage <laughs> One great thing about going to paint this. What? That there's gonna be another spot in the garage. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. That's for great. a couple weeks, there's gonna be an extra spot in the garage what, for one what, of these cars. What? Let's move the courage to now. I think that we need a cold start. Let's do this. We need a cold start, cold brew right now. What do you think? <laughs> oh, I desperately need one. What a great plug right That's... every time we start a car. Cold start, cold <laughs> brew. The only way to start your morning with a cold start, cold brew. We'll be the courage you, whatever, whatever you like. <laughs> huh, a little late, little laziness of you, no? Little, little oh, lazy. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm gonna leave this little pointy ass out just for now. <laughs> okay, okay, just for now. Okay. Just when for we now. come back, we'll have to clean this. That's we'll right. Out. Which car should. By the way, you've already explained all the stuff, everything we're doing? Well, we're gonna go with Galpin. I haven't said what we're gonna do there. Like I said, we're gonna paint the car and Galpin's gonna do it. But I haven't explained oh, awesome. why we're doing it, when it's gonna be revealed, all of that stuff. So let's jump into whatever's now. Wait, well, what, what, uh, what, what's the vehicle we should use to get back? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. What are you gonna. I feel like Tony's too short to drive the 4x4. Four four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Tony. You know what the rule is? If you're, if you don't go past the mirror, you can't ride. You can't ride the in the rule. car. Let's see, are you good? Do you make it, Alejandro? Do I? No, 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 no. You're cheating. Let me see if you. Alejandro barely makes it. Barely. <laughs> Sorry. Let's Sorry, take, Tony. Let's take this one and the four by four down to drive it. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, first of all, he, he, this squirrel doesn't give a shit about us. Two, I think it might be men. That's a fat squirrel. Yeah, that's a chubby. That is a really chubby hey, squirrel. It's interesting seeing a chubby squirrel in the wild. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> technically, they shouldn't be chubby. They should not be chubby. <laughs> That's the last time this wing is gonna go up for, for a oh. couple weeks. <laughs> All the noises this thing makes. It's fucking unreal. This is why I'm saying, why do you need another manual car? Like in the podcast we were talking about it. This is it. This is pretty good for me. Speaking of weird noises, what happened this morning? Oh, Tata? Tata? <laughs> so after we shot the podcast, Blake called me and said, and I don't know if you guys are new to the channel, we rescued a, a squirrel that was dying and we've been nurturing it back to health and she's growing and she's really attached to me and I'm really attached to her, honestly. And this morning I was like, babe, do you mind feeding Tata a, a grape and this and that? I, I have to shoot the podcast. I gotta go to Galpin. She goes, yeah, no problem, babe. Calls me two seconds later. Are you here? Are you here? I was like, yeah. I, sh I run to the house. She's like, come to the house. I run to the house. The second I open the door, I turn around and I see Belen just sitting like this, Tata, just the squirrel looking at her like this, and Fiona on the corner, Tata looks at me and the second she sees me, she comes running towards me. <laughs> and she goes, like, can I jump on you? I was like, yes, <laughs> I love her so much. But Bolet was freaking the fuck out because she was loose on the house. We think that she figured out a way how to open her pen because... Yeah, this is the second escape, right? Yeah, she's really smart, but this is the first time she's gotten outside off the second floor. She came down the stairs and went into the dining room table and started like just chilling there and doing other shit. 
Uh, two things. Yeah. You could either get her in the, the Nut Job 3 movie, uh -huh. they're gonna make one. Yeah. Or you could sue the studios. I think I'll be suing the studios. Or you could do a new, like, Breaking out nuts or something like the break. The nut. Either way, we'll the work break out. <laughs>
This is so gangster. Hey, okay. we, hey, ask the owner if we can, uh, if we can drive this one day. Okay. This is so gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Fuck your Maybach. Yeah. yeah, this is. I was gonna say this, this is, is uh, an American this is a Maybach. Real presidential. Wow. Is there, there's no glass. These become this jump is, seats yeah, too. There's a, there's a oh, oh there, is a, there is a partition. Well, hey. The partition goes up, and then these are jump seats. <gasps> so you could wow. fit six in here if you wanted to, and then put this up. Hello, Wait, hello. How much are these like one of these right now? Uh, if you find one in decent condition, I don't know. I would say maybe 30, 40. Yeah, just the car. I, yeah. This guy spent another 40 on it between the engine. We put air conditioning in the back and in the front, so he has dual AC. I did the whole interior. Jesus. Uh, air ride suspension. Tell me you're you're right. Beautiful. You're a beast, dude. This is what the president should have. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you imagine those? Like, what is that? that? What is that yeah. humongous machine right there? That is the CNC. Oh, of course. What's a CNC? I have no idea. So a CNC, if we need to mill out uh, a part out of a block of whether it be aluminum or steel, steel, whatever it might be, we throw in a chunk of uh, raw material in there, and then Eric will program the machine to actually make whatever it might be. It might be like a bearing race or it might be a housing for like a, let's say, blow-off valve or whatever it might be. You so create those here? You can make anything. You you design it in AutoCAD. And is, this, is this like a really expensive 3D printer? Yes. Yes. yes, <laughs> this, yes. By the, this yes. is like the, a real 3D yes. like a, printer. Like, like, so you'll be able to make stuff like <gasps> out of metal you can make. Things. Why would you show us this? All the things we can make now! This is amazing. Look it's actually this. like the opposite of a 3D printer. 3D printer is additive. It creates this. Yes. Right. It is, yeah, this is it right. this breaks down. It's like, uh, it's more, it's like my life. It's, it's like your life? Yeah. <laughs> it takes away. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. We can make like like a Fargini right car badge. Now. We can make we like can. official car badges. We can make them Fargini emblems. Yeah. Like real official ones. I don't know what you're going to put it on, but. <laughs> I was like, hey, are you giving him ideas? You know that he's going to be like, oh, I'm obsessed about this idea. On a car yeah. He's going to go, oh, I'm obsessed about this idea yeah. about creating a Fargini <laughs> thing. I need to create it. How much do you think Galvin's going to charge you for it? And I'll be like, me? I know you. What is this? So this is a 2018 uh, Mustang EcoBoost. New what? front end, taillights have been redesigned a little. Wait, this is the new, like, new newest thing. Mm -hmm. The new, new, new newest. This is, the, so it's got the new lights, right? New lights, front bumper, lights, fender, hood are completely different. The scoops are different as well. Yeah, and you saw the back, right, Pargini? Very yes. small cues. Just this panel and then the taillights, rear spoiler yeah. and then the valence down here. All the GTs will come with quad tips. By the way, Tommy, I've been reading that GT, just like a stock GT, will be faster than previous generation's 350Rs. Because they're saying the stock GT will now have a 10-speed transmission. The 10-speed transmission will be in power band. Every time you shift, you'll be right there in peak power band. So uh, we've heard it, but we haven't had the, ch had the chance to try it. Damn it. fucking speeds. What's, what's when, gonna be the cap of that? <laughs> At six, I, I was like, this is getting ridiculous. This and then they threw the seventh. I was like, all right, we made it, guys. Hey, Tony. Where's Stop stealing stuff. <laughs> oh, this yeah, is the vehicle. Oh my God. Like, in here. I didn't know when are they, I Tommy, when do these hit the streets for customers? We just delivered a red one this, uh, yesterday actually. Do it. So. If you have a V8 10 speed for us later, let us know. We'd uh, love to. Right, love to check it out, yeah. We'd I'm, love to I'm do some burnouts. Mustang guy. <laughs> speaking I, of, hey, speaking of Mustang guys, look at this. This is the biggest Mustang I never got. I really don't know what this is. Skyline. 1972. The original one. Mm -hmm. Boom. This is the original GTR Wendy? That's, that's right. <laughs> Get out of here, dude. Thank we'll you. Give Tommy. You the as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. You want to give an update on what we're doing? I was going to go get delicious, get a delicious meal at Zoho House. But aside from that, I think I want to do, uh, um, I want to explain to people why I painted that car. Is that cool, Fargini? That's very cool. Because you know, and tell me if you've heard this or not. Yeah. Everyone says that once you paint the car, it loses its value. I do know that. Okay, yes. this is a fact, right? Yes, yes. Also, do you know if you call Porsche and say, hey, Porsche, I want to paint my car this color, they'll tell you, you can send it to us, but we're not going to paint it. Someone will paint it and we'll vouch for you that, yeah, we, we approved it. But then again, Porsche is approving also a rinky dink shop at the pier. So, there is no real, and this is one of the things that bothers me the most, Fargini. It's just like old school mentality and old school ways of viewing things. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. And maybe people are not going to look at it and say, you know what, Alejandro, I agree with you, I, it makes sense. In my head, it doesn't make sense, and I'm not going to live my life just playing that game that doesn't make sense because I didn't ask myself the question, why the fuck are people doing this or acting that way? And it, 
There's no explanation. Why do people think that original paint jobs are so epic, and especially in today's day with technology and everything, right? Yep. That, that's that's all I'm saying. I've, I've, I've just, to me, it's just a dream of mine to be able to change the car that I love the most in my garage and make it exactly the way I want it. That, that I get, like, and also that the fact that Galpin is the one doing it with all their history and all the stuff that they've <laughs> and, done. And speaking of history, uh, we couldn't get this on camera, but speaking of, uh, you shouldn't paint or paint your car. Some of the stuff they were showing us and the paint jobs oh, that people, insane. some of the insane. paint jobs that customers the have way, commissioned. They're, they're painting, like they're doing a hundred thousand dollar paint jobs on cars, left on cars, left and right, like classic. Uh, how about this? They're doing class. They're doing hundred thousand dollar paint jobs on cars that are worth maybe thirty thousand. Well, on those, and then yeah. they're also doing that on like classic classics, right? Like yeah. million dollar cars. Yeah. So the question is, what makes modern cars not a unapplicable to that rule. Right. Does that make sense? What makes modern cars be like, well, you can paint the old school ones and yes, the, the money will be fine, <laughs> yeah. but the modern ones, no. <laughs> right. We're just retarded. And by the way, value at the end of the day comes down to what is someone willing to pay, to pay. for and how much they value what you just yeah, did and the, the way I look, and the way I look at this one, the value of this one is, if there's three car GTs and they're three silver and have the black interior, and mine is a original Porsche color from like a very, a very collectible Porsche color, right? The ruby stone red. Yeah. If you're if you're that guy that's looking for something special, if all three cars are the same price and have the same miles, which one would you buy? The the more unique one. Which immediately gives it more value. Yeah. So I, I and again, guys, I'm here falling on my face for you. You know. So if I fail at this and my car loses a hundred percent of its value, you know that that's the case, and you can't change old school mentalities. But if it, it works for me and it's not like I'm gonna sell it after I paint it, but if people like, if I inspire others to do the same shit as they should, right? And enjoy their life and do whatever they want rather than what others say they should. Yeah. I won. Hey, and it's I your got. depreciation and you could do whatever you want with Thank it. Thank you, Fargini. <laughs> Thank you, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go to Soho House. At the, here. at the house of the Soho. That's uh, just saw so new people in the channel that don't know. It's a place where you probably can't afford to or will get in. It's <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> it's not true. It is actually true. It is not true, Fargini. <laughs> we're we're the, the good thing about Soho House right now is that we're the lowest level people that they have <laughs> yeah, and accept yeah. and have that accepted. I, that oh, by the way. That I will agree. Do with. you agree? With <laughs> I, I agree. And thank you for letting me come in. Every, every like, time they see us rolling, they're like, 